This is my very favorite book of all the books that my mom made me read and that we read as kids that were about this kind of thing. This one is the best because it goes through every situation and it really focuses on families with kids and not and not about being afraid, just about having things on hand. Favorite book. First thing you want to get is water. These are my favorite. Five gallons, new bottle. They're charging $6.29 and that's about what you get them for at Walmart too. These can work as long as they're one time only. The kind of plastic that they are um, loves bacteria. These are okay, but they're hard to carry. So if you really want that kind of plastic, get something smaller like this. Any store that has these bulk bins should be able to sell you bagged products like this. It's becoming more popular because then there's not as much packaging, apparently. So ask your own grocery store if they have bins like this, if you can buy in bulk. So butter on sale is just under $3 a pound. I do not buy butter until Christmas when it goes on sale at $2 a pound everywhere. Every grocery store, because people use so much butter at Christmas time, has butter for $2 a pound. So we buy boxes. So we are at the Dollar Tree. This is our favorite dollar store. We just um, got a few boxes of toothbrushes and the nice thing about the dollar store is that it can help you save money to buy food storage at other places. Uh, the Dollar Tree is where I like to get all of our medical stuff like band-aids, um, hydrogen peroxide, Advil, everything like that. Super, super cheap. Tylenol, and we also like to get Epsom salts here, rubbing alcohol, everything that's in our first aid kit, pretty much we got at the dollar store. The dollar store is not the place to buy food storage of any kind. It's That's how that they make the profit is stuff like this would go for much, much less at a grocery store than it does at the dollar store. So never get anything that's food related at the dollar store. The stuff that you use for self-reliant food storage type stuff, you can just go get at Walmart. It's just that if you don't have a name for it, you don't know what you're looking for, then it's hard to find it. So I'm gonna give you a name for things here at the preparedness store. Doesn't mean you need to go spend this kind of money on it. Um, we didn't. When we were first doing food storage at, at the beginning of our marriage, we waited for tax return season. And when we got our first tax return when Paige was little, we spent, I think we spent $700 on food storage. We went and got the number, is it called number 10? Number 10 cans because we didn't have buckets. So we went and got the big coffee can size food storage that has grains and stuff in it. We still have all that. Um, because it'll last for up to 30 years. Um, once we had enough of that that we felt pretty confident about our food storage, that's when we started to go get the bulk stuff and put it in, um, in buckets ourselves. So, um, if you're in an area with a lot of LDS um, Mormon people, then there's generally a lot of stores that sell things for preparedness and food storage because it's part of the LDS culture and religion to be um, self-reliant so that's why our area has so many things like the preparedness store and even our Walmart and our Winco store a lot of preparedness stuff because there's a demand for it for those of you who don't have that kind of store I would go to Azure Standard because you can still buy things in bulk from them at prices that are similar to what you could get them at Walmart or Winco Azure Standard with a Z AzureStandard.com is what I think it is I've never actually used them because I've got Winco and I can't afford organic anyway. But um, my mom uses Azure Standard all the time. This is the Army Surplus store, right next to I-15.
This is where we get all of our MREs. We have fire starters and emergency blankets and buckets. Three dollars for a bucket with a lid. Seven dollars for a water container. I, again, I love these as water containers because I can lift them. Here is the siphons to be able to uh, get liquids out of the big drums. These are nice because they're very, very concentrated. It would probably be like chewing a package of sugary lard, but good to have. You need some kind of light, which would be candles or lanterns. Usually it's good to have something that's not flammable. Everything here is pretty cheap. It's one of my favorite stores. Again, the first thing that you want is a 72-hour kit. And in that 72-hour kit, you'll have enough food, water, change of clothing, um, medicine for 72 hours so that if you need to leave your house, you can, but also we keep one in our car. The girls have one that go in the car with me and it includes tennis shoes, closed toed shoes, emergency blankets, and I switch things out according to season. So warm weather things go in now. And so, sorry, cold weather things, which would be like gloves and hats and coats go in now. You need to make sure that the packs are not too heavy. This is where I got my pack. And they wanted, I think, $85 for it. And I saw that the stitching had come out of the side. These are really pretty good quality packs. They don't have a solid back like mine did. Let's see if I can go find mine. Um, my pack, the stitching had come out of the side and I looked to see if I could find one that wasn't broken like that and all of them had the same defect. The side stitching was coming out. So I took it up to the front and asked him, can I, can you take this price down for me? I'll go home and I'll stitch it up. So they gave it to me for 35 and that was a really nice hiking pack. They also have tools here, fishing rods. Again, make sure that your pack is not so heavy that you can't carry it and you need it to have good straps. You don't want a duffel. You want a backpack and you want it to have chest straps so that you can put it on and it'll hold itself on. You want a lightweight tent. Um, you want a shovel, a, a very light, small shovel for burying waste products. You want rope. You want paracord. A paracord in your 72-hour kit. You want some way to filter water, some way to boil water, and also some kind of chemical means of cleaning water. That's really important because um, if you have a five-gallon um, water container, that'll last your family for the three days, but what if for some reason you can't carry it with you? Make sure you have a container that you can put water in and it's in your pack and it's lightweight. And yeah, it's a little over the top with all the army stuff. <laughs> a little over the top. So the average backpack here is under 40 bucks. And once you get past those flags, it starts to get a little weird. A lot of random things. Good sleeping bags. You want a really, really lightweight sleeping bag. And you want a couple of big garbage sacks in your 72-hour kit so that it will, so you'll have, you can use them as a poncho, you can use them to carry out garbage, you can use them for whatever you need to, but have several garbage cans and garbage sacks in each pack. And I like to actually put my clothes and everything that's in my pack into a garbage sack and seal it. And that way, if it gets wet, what's inside doesn't get wet. Also in your 72-hour kit, you want a set of long sleeve everything, socks and shoes. You don't need more, you only need one set of pants and shirt, but you need three changes of underwear and socks. Do not put cast iron in your pack. Do not put canned goods in your pack. You want it to be exceptionally light. Depending on how much money you have, you can get little stoves and stuff that you can get to cook and heat with to put in your pack. 
However, if you can't get them and have them be light, just assume you're going to be starting a fire. Make sure you have a fire starter. Make sure you have a knife. A really good knife and a way to sharpen it. This is something that I have in my 72 r kit. I really like this. It's kind of like a, a camel back, camel pack, except it's not hootie duty, And it doesn't have the little sippy thing. You actually have to take it out and open the nozzle and drink out of it. Again, really lightweight tent. If you can't find a light enough weight tent, get a tarp and look up how to make a tent out of a tarp. Again, flashlights. It's nice to have a pad for underneath your tent, your, your sleeping bag, especially in really cold weather. You don't want that to steal your body heat. Wool is really good. Cotton, not so much. And for cold weather. Make sure that whatever you put in is comfortable and actually fits. Just grungy old stuff works as long as it fits. You don't want to be getting wet. So make sure that you have a windproof, waterproof layer. We also have things like tweezers, a mirror, a loop, a jeweler's loop to be able to find things like um, thistles, medicine, first aid kit. Toilet paper is really important. And always, always, always a bag of wet wipes. It really helps with the hygiene moleskin, that kind of thing. They have a lot of dental, medical stuff right here. Glasses if you need them. Make sure you have an extra pair. We have some, we have some flashlights that don't require batteries, you just wind them up too. Knives, stuff like that. You can get walkie-talkies if you want them. And then I have with my 72-hour kit, I have a bike trailer. So that if ever we had to go somewhere, I could carry my children if I needed to. And my pack if I needed to. Without having to make the decision between taking my child and taking my pack. So always I have a bike trailer ready to go. One with really big wheels for bad terrain. You can come to a preparedness store and find these kind of things all over the place. A lot of this you can find in other stores. The difference is coming to one of these stores is they can tell you how to use it and what the application is. And you can spend a lot of money in places like this. So I'm just going to walk around and a lot, most of the stuff I have tested and found unnecessary, um, redundant, expensive. Just look in your own home for things that you use and, that would just and try to find everyday solutions from what's around you. Skills as opposed to gimmickry. Gimm yeah, gimmickry. These are the cans that you can buy, and it's what we started out with. You can see how pricey they are. For another five dollars, you could get a twenty-pound bag. This is eighty-four ounces, but you don't get the long-term storage the same because these are completely sealed. You have these nifty little lids. You open them up with a can opener, and then you put the lid on. It keeps it safe. And um, all of these things are great. If you need to do things cheap though, get a very few of these and then get mostly bulk goods. These kinds of things, I would never get these because you'll do better with a bag of beans, get more nutrition out of it than you will with that. The freeze dried stuff, don't get it. You're wasting your time. You're better to have a 50 pound box of potatoes and some beans and that kind of thing than these kind of um, specialty things that just add flavor.
This is the way that you can get a 50 pound um, bag of anything. A lot of times you can get them already filled. If you go to a bakery and ask for their frosting buckets, they're two, two gallons and there's something that I can lift, which is nice because then I can use them. These are wheat grinders. We do have a wheat grinder but you can also use wheat just by putting it in a crock pot and cooking it like oatmeal. And that's really tasty. Bread makers, books, canning supplies, all sorts of fun things you can do. But what you wanna do first is you wanna get some water storage. And you wanna get some bulk goods that your family's not allergic to. I like a pressure cooker because with the pressure cooker, it doesn't take as much electricity. I do have a wheat grinder. I think that's a fantastic idea. However, you have to be careful when you're um, grinding things at home. These are high heat. And once you have your wheat ground, you need to use it instantly. You don't want to store it. You want to store your wheat berries and use your wheat flour as soon as it's ground. have a dehydrator and they're super nice. They're also expensive to use. I also have one of these, the solar encased one, and that has worked just fine. But if you're in a high humidity area, it probably wouldn't work good for you. I think so. Juicers, probably not really great in an emergency situation because most people probably won't have fresh fruits and vegetables in an emergency situation. You'll just be eating stuff that's been in storage. Fun books. Make sure to have oil in your food storage. Lots of oil, lots of salt. Here's some things that you can get. We keep a lot of honey in our food storage and we also keep garden seeds in our food storage. Diatomaceous earth you can use to take care of pests, uh, internal parasites, that kind of thing. Masks are good to have. Um, have flashlights, have batteries. Again, a lot of this stuff you can just get at uh, Walmart. You know, you want to buy it as cheap as you can. Although this isn't too bad. $1.49 for the ponchos, that's pretty good. If you have medication for a child or for yourself, make sure you have that on hand. Make sure you have a backpack if you have to leave your house. Have smaller containers of water next to your 72-hour kit so that you can leave your home for 72 hours if you needed to. 72 hour kit. And I do have a video on my 72 hour kit. Make sure you have some tablets in it that'll purify water and a way to start a fire. And make sure the backpack is comfortable and that you have everything in it that you need um, according to the weather, whether it be hat for sun or hat for cold or gloves or whatever. Have a radio. We have some that are hand cranked, but you can also get some that need batteries. Um, fun things, solar oven. We want to get one of the eco fans for our stove. We think that would be really neat because then we wouldn't need to have um, the electric fan on all the time something to be able to boil water in, some kind of um, pot. These are rocket stove um, things, stoves, whatever. You don't want to be carrying Dutch ovens in your 72-hour kit, by the way. These that you keep seeing are for, make, are for washing laundry. Here's some pretty cool buckets with um, like MRE type stuff in them. And these we have in our home so that we can store more water. These big ones. 
the 50 galloners. And along with that, you need a hose that is um, potable for potable water. And we get those at the RV stores. They're, they use them for putting water into the RV. And we have a really nice long one so that we don't have to try to move these. Once we have them in place, we just run the hose to our container. And then these are used to siphon water out of your water container.